Setestal is a small traditional region in southern Norway. Above Lake Buglandsfjord is the Ultra River Valley, home to people whose culture, traditions, dialect and music differ from other regions of the country. There is still the old tradition of playing the moon harp, a Norwegian type of juice harp. This tradition has continued since time immemorial. No one knows exactly when the moon harp was first played here, but going on archaeological evidence, musicians have been using it for centuries, as well as the fiddle and the harding fella. We are speaking with one of the most famous players in Norway, Sigurd Brock. Good day, Sigurd. Hello, Vladimir. You live in a marvelous place and I am glad to be here. Let's speak about Munharpa. What is Munharpa in your life? Munharpa has been uh, one of my biggest uh, interests the last uh, 20 years, so it is uh, very important to me. I have used a lot of time on playing and uh, thinking about tunes and uh, playing techniques and uh, stuff like that. Can you remember when you first heard the juice harp and what was your impression? I don't know uh, exactly when I first uh, heard it, but it must have been my uh, grandfather, Tolaif Hobjörgum. I knew it was a nice sound and uh, I um, uh, was uh, impressed the first time I heard uh, Björgiv Straumi. He was uh, visiting my uh, grandfather and they were uh, sitting in a room uh, with the door shut. So I only heard uh, a very loud uh, juice harp sound and then um, I heard afterwards that it was Björgiv Straumi, who had been uh, on a visit. Can you tell us what is known about the history of Sittisdal tradition? We have a strong uh, tradition in Sittisdal, both in uh, playing the juice harp and uh, making uh, juice harps. It goes far uh, back in time. And here you can show where some of the players and uh, juice harp makers have lived. Setesdal people have been playing the Moon Harper and Harding Fellow over a considerable period of time. On our journey through this history, we'll begin with Knut Jonsson Hedi, who has done much for Moon Harper music, but who didn't actually play the instrument. He was born in 1857 and knew some tunes from old time Moon Harper players and adapted these for the Harding Fellow. Today, we know the Schirmerschlager dance tune, 
translated as Fire of the Amazons, because Knut learned this from Bjug Torjesen Hoover, a student of Torje Farmu. Torje is the oldest known Sedestal fiddler born in 1790. Father and son blacksmiths, Mikkel Kovenis and Asbjorn Brocke, also Moonharper players, were in contact with Knut Hedde. This is where Mikkel Kovenis uh, lived. He was a very famous uh, Jews harp player and uh, Jews harp uh, smith. And um, his father, Asbjorn Thorolsson Brocke, who was also a Jews harp player and uh, harp smith, lived a little further north here. This is uh, the house where Oni Rista lived. He was a Jews harp player. And um, it was built in uh, 1947. Oni Rista was also a politician and a writer and uh, leader of Sätistal Spilmanslag. Knut Tveit was a neighbor of Arni Rista and remembered that because Arni used the moon harper often, and always carried it in his pocket. He had made a special device to protect the instrument. This device was created using a wooden block made from the curly birch, a certain type of birch tree, with the moon harper firmly tied to the block with a leather strip. As a result, Knut Tveit made a replica of this device. This is the actual moon harper owned by Arni Ruster, having been made by Knut Nberg. This is where my uh, great-grandfather Gunnar Andreson Hedde lived with his family. He was a silversmith and juice harp player. Yeah, land. Andres Korista lived in this house with his family. He is a very important uh, Jews harp player and uh, Hardanger fiddle player in the Sätistal tradition. Archaeologists have found moon harpers in many parts of Sedestal, but a particular centre of moon harper playing tradition is a small village of Rusta. 
Most of the musicians spoken of in this film have lived, or are living, within a 10 mile radius of this village. From the family home of the Björgums, we can see Rooster to the left and Broquet to the right, on the side of the hill. Korsland is the place where my great-grandfather, Halvar T. Björgum, senior, uh, lived. He was a juice harp player and a silversmith. Now the younger Halvar T. Björgum lives here. He's a very famous uh, Hardanger fiddle player in the Sertistal tradition.
In this uh, house that was built for uh, two families in about uh, 1950 lived my um, grandfather Tolaiv Hobjorgum and his family and uh, my grandmother's brother uh, with his family uh, and um, also my great grandfather uh, Gunnar Andreson Hedde lived uh, in this house uh, the last of his years. Now uh, my grandfather's uh, part of the house is owned by my brother Torlaj Brocke. Yeah, we are now sitting uh, together at Knut Veit, the big uh, use harp uh, blacksmith. He started um, with the blacksmith work when you were at the Brigade Northern Norway Brigade, yeah. 1961. Yeah, 1961 or 1962. Well, I I was up in the Brigade in Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, up there yeah. to uh, in the um, in the army, yeah. 1961, 1962, yeah. and learned uh, how to make uh, horseshoes. You, yeah, yeah. And then you were um, uh, repaired the cars, yeah. car repairing here at Rust and uh, in the workshop here for many yeah, years. I worked for the first 40 years. 40 for, uh, years. Bail mechanic. Uh, car repairing. Yeah. Compact story about it. Uh, my father uh, went over across the road and, and asked Knut if he could uh, please try to make the Munharp because nobody at that time could do that because the last one Knut Germundsen Hove he passed away in 1976 yeah. and that was about uh, uh, 10 years earlier so nobody could do that so then uh, uh, my father uh, asked uh, Knut to start with that yeah. we can start with that one for tell uh, Please tell the camera where, um, how, how, what's the story, the history about that? Yeah. Yeah. The, the story starts with, uh, with that great uh, battleship uh, Tirpitz uh, from Germany, which Hitler was his, uh, his uh, pride, because it was the biggest ship that were made so far. And um, it was uh, up in the Alta Fjord, way up in Finnmark and there they tried to bomb it, uh, bombers from uh, Russia, they were uh, uh, alliert with uh, England and America and Norway in the uh, Second World War, we are talking about uh, back then. Uh, but they didn't succeed because it was so armed with, uh, with the thick uh, steel and um, so they also tried uh, and they did some damage with uh, uh, mini submarines uh, from uh, uh, beneath the, the water surface and um, they succeeded partly and they then they drag uh, the whole ship down to Tromsø um, to make a kind of uh, fortress out of it because it has uh, big cannons on it and and uh, well armed. So, um, <coughs> uh, but in Tromsø, uh, then the Englishmen could uh, could reach them with their bombers, and they attacked it, uh, the ship uh, so badly that that it sank there in, in the in the Tromsø harbor of Tromsø or, or um, in, in the neighborhood. But it was not that deep at that place. So just half of the ship uh, uh, was sticking up afterwards. And um, later it, it has been uh, uh, cut up in, in smaller pieces and the material has been used for for example, in uh, in streets where w when they are repairing the streets and the 
and um, tubes for water and uh, and stuff and uh, and they used the 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 take place uh, for that kind of work and Knut asked uh, uh, some who were working there if if they could uh, please uh, cut off a small part of the plates so he could uh, could, ha could have it uh, for material for for Munharpe. but uh, but when when the supervisors heard that. Uh, he answered that uh, not uh, not uh, uh, you cannot do do that at all. It's uh, forbidden to do to do that, and it uh, some year after he had um, uh, got the permission to to get a small part uh, of that plate uh, after quite a few years. And then he has made this uh, harp of, of that steel, of that big battleship uh, terpit. Knut is very enthusiastic about most aspects of life and has managed to maintain young at heart. He has a passion for all military hardware and has repaired an original Willis American Jeep from the Second War. Yeah, he was the neighbor yeah. of Onirusta, yeah. and uh, and uh, I will show you the house yeah. where where uh, Knut has uh, is born and raised, yeah. just where the Farmu brothers, uh, uh, Tarja Farmu, one of the brothers, was living there part of his life, and uh, and Onirusta was his neighbor, and he remember ver very well when he played and how loud it was when he when he played. But you had also um, uh, you saw made by by the B seventeen bomber, B seventeen. Yeah. It's a part in the engine where where the air and the uh, and the gas uh, is going out and in from the cylinder. Yeah. yeah. The exhaust ventilator. Yeah. yeah. From from an American bomber called called the Flying Fortress. B-17. It was a Boeing fab, uh, factory in Seattle where they produced that mm -hmm. and uh, it went from uh, Scotland. Yeah, they come from Scotland. And, uh, and it was Scotland in 1941. Yeah, in 1941 yeah. Uh, it came here to a bomb and it was a day bomber so so uh, it was discovered by the Germans, by the Messerschmitt, and they, and they brought it down, and everybody lost their lives, and they are buried buried in, in uh, Bugland uh, Cemetery. They were on the way into Oslo Fjorden and they bombed a Tysk ship. On the on, on uh, its way to the Os Fjord, uh, Oslo Fjord, to bomb. Uh, German ship there. Uh, this accident uh, happened in 1941, and this is part of the engine, as I told. Og at at besetningen uh, ligger begravet på Bygland Kirkegård. Det er sjov sjov gravstykke. Yeah, yeah. Se seven uh, tombstones there, and they are English and Canadian, as far as I remember. Yeah, yeah. Engelsk og kanadisk. Yeah, yeah. And it has been some memorial. There and and also a blade of the propeller is uh, is put up beside the uh, tombstones there. When there were some veterans from England and Canada, uh, where Björgu Straumi also uh, attended because he has Björgu Straumi has composed a tune, yeah. uh, Luftslage. 
Sylvartown is the place where my grandfather Tolai Hobjorgum and my grandmother Hege lived during the summer. They were uh, silversmiths and uh, were selling uh, silver to tourists. My grandfather also uh, entertained the tourists with um, uh, Hardanger fiddle playing and sometimes also we played the juice harp. The place is uh, now owned by uh, my uncle Halvar Tebjörgum and uh, recently it is, has been a, a folk music uh, museum here. In this museum, we can see interesting collections of Moonharpers and Hardingfeller, having belonged to previous famous players. We can also see other types of setter-style instruments, but now rarely used. We also have a replica of a blacksmith's workshop showing a Moonharper being made. Not shown is a replica of a fiddle maker's workshop. Down the steps we can find Halvard T. Björgum's mixing studio. Rooster, that you see now, has a special place in Sederstol music culture. However, let's look at previous Norwegian history that in my opinion has a connection with the Jews' harp. Around 1000 years ago, in what is now modern-day Norway, Sweden and Denmark, lived what we know as the Vikings. From the 8th until the 11th centuries, they made expeditionary forays to other European countries, firstly as warriors and subsequently as settlers. Where we are now can be said to be part of their motherland. Just 13 kilometres from Rusta, near what is now Langade village, of Viking burial places, which contained their military possessions. But the most interesting thing for us is that the same places visited by the Vikings correspond with concentrations of Jews' harp discoveries. Some of these have a particular type of design, namely a wedge-shaped type of reed-fixing joint. Is this fact possibly an instance of pure coincidence? Is it pure chance? Judge for yourself. England, northwest France, and Belgium were Viking colonies, and there is evidence that the Jews harp has been played there from ancient times until the present. Around the middle of the 9th century, a Viking fleet was wrecked in a storm off the coast of northwest Spain, now known as Galicia. Here, the Jews harp tradition has been preserved and using the rare type of wedge to fix the reed, similar to the Norwegian style. The Kingdom of Sicily was founded by the Vikings in 1130 AD, and nowadays they still play the Jews harp, locally known as the Maranzana, again having the same wedge joint. In addition, in Novgorod, a part of old Russia where the Vikings had close political and trading ties, Jews' harps have also been found. Keeping the continuous tradition is very important for folk music. Unfortunately, it's a problem almost everywhere in Europe, but not here in Citizdal. Here it continues for centuries. What is the secret? How do you preserve your tradition nowadays? I think that the music itself is the key to the question because um, many feel that this is uh, interesting music and they want to learn it. And we are also very lucky that we have such uh, great uh, juice harp uh, uh, smiths uh, that can make uh, lots of juice harps for the people who want to learn it. You play very traditional music and in the same time improvise. What is the principle of an improvisation? What can be changed and cannot? It is not a very uh, big improvisation. We never change the melody or 
put in something uh, brand new. We only change a little bit um, in the details in the various sections of the tunes. And that uh, includes that we don't always start a tune the same way. And we don't always end the tune the same way. Uh, so that uh, must be the improvisation, if that can be called improvisation at all. Tunes consist of phrases. Is it possible in your tradition use phrases from one tune to another tune? Yes, it is uh, possible, but I don't think it is a very good way to go. I uh, prefer to um, use the elements that have uh, been in the tune instead of uh, adding uh, uh, elements from uh, other tunes. Do you have some extraordinary stories about Monharpa? Well, I think it is a quite extraordinary story that you come all the way from Russia to Brokke in Sädhistal and want to learn about the <laughs> Norwegian Sädhistal juice harp tradition. That is quite extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you very much for the interview. This is Bergva, where uh, the Jews harp uh, smith uh, Knut Niklosson Berg lived uh, the last years of his life. He was called Knut Bergva. Homoren is the place where uh, Knut Eivindsson Brokke lived. He was a bachelor and a Jews harp player and lived in the house with other family members. Asbjörn Thoralsson Brokke, Mikkel Kovenes' father, also came from here. This is where Knut Jermundsson Hove lived. He was a harp maker and um, made very many juice harp through the years. He can be seen in a film called Munharpa, where my uh, grandfather and great-grandfather also uh, participate. Playing the Munharpa, Fiddle and Harding Fellow, making silver jewellery, agriculture and livestock have been sources of income for many generations of local people. The magical attraction of the music and traditions here is so strong for example, the Swede Daniel Sandenvog and Canadian Jamie Ludberg both moved to Rusta mainly to learn the Harding Fella, but also the Moon Harper at the same time. They learned the local Setter Style dialect and subsequently became part of the local music tradition. In Rusta is an excellent sculpture of a local moon harper. Three blacksmiths making moon harper live here, namely Björgulf Straumer, Björgulf Rusta, and Knut Tveit. In Bukle, another nearby village, we can meet Falkir Nesland, a legendary maker of moon harpers.
köpt den. Uh. <laughs> Here we can see the original smithy of Volker Nesling, where he began to make his famous instruments, and which can still be used today. Notice that the forge used only hand bellows and simple tools and devices. Yeah. 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 Ja, det är de med tunga. Så man har tagit och varmar den gott. För att twisting. Ja. Easier with two people. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. good. But yeah, uh, but doing it as one person. The beginning, yeah. uh, they're all, all, yeah. always the two. No. Yes. I screw it in also, and so some corner in also, so warm it in, and so bank on the plan. So so I don't know how it feels. But. Och så Johan, när du är lagt nu när du är där så hej då, kan du se, jag har haft något att köra. Ja, jag har gjort det. We don't exactly know when the moon harper first appeared in the Sedastan region. But there has to be a reason for it to have survived here for so long. Times change. People change. But the Moon Harper remains important. Mm -hmm. 